Hey everybody, so welcome to part 3 of my Link to the Past ROM hacking tutorial. Uh, this one's going to be separated into different parts that I, uh, I did before this actually. It was a bit more of an unorganized video, so I thought I'd kind of just condense things into simple portions. And uh, if there's anything you don't understand about what I touch on in this video with the palettes, the construction, and the 4 beat 16 color image, let me know in the comments so I can further explain it, because I feel like I... You know, I touch on the very basic of it, but there might be some people who might be confused, and I just don't know how to answer questions that haven't been asked yet. So, I hope you enjoy this, and in the next part, we'll have dungeon editing. Alright, so here, we're going to adjust the palette of the tree to make it match its original form in the Gates of Darkness ROM. Now... What I have here is the actual palette where these trees are located. So for the tree's main color, you'll go under palettes, area colors, zero, and right here is the tree's colors right now. That's where these browns are coming from. So what we'll do is we'll take these colors over here and we'll move them over here. So you can hit add to custom colors in Hyrule Magic, and this is kind of how I just hold on to an entire row of colors. I just literally put them in order. It's a little backwards, but it gets the job done. And finally, the very last. We'll go over here and we'll just work backwards. And of course, you can try things out with your own colors. This is just what I'm doing to make it look like it, like it originally was meant to look. So now I've converted all these colors. I'll hit save on that ROM and close this palette out. And this is area two we're checking. It works in any area, but I like to reopen them. Oh, that's the dungeon. Then here we go, we have this change, but as you can see now, because it's no longer its own graphics, um, the actual uh, bark of the tree changed. So in this game, if we look here, you can see that this is actually on a different palette, number six, than I believe it is four. So we can go in our game, turn these markers off, they're in the way. take this from 4, turn it into 6. Now, for right now these colors aren't going to be exact because we can edit them. Oh, whoopsie. And that's how you would get that to be its own, you know, its own palette color while you're constructing it. Now the thing about the palettes is like this one has pink in it, you see, so I would have to fix that in the editor um, and find that palette. The thing is, is that they're not very well labeled. A lot of this is going to be have to be experimentation on your part or looking at the ultimate guide, which I linked in the first part of this tutorial. So now I'm going to show you some basic uh, construction of graphics. Uh, what I'll do is take this little block from my game, actually, and I'll just throw it, say, in pieces right here. So we got this right here and this right here. Now this is our house graphics right here. This is pretty universal. It'll be on every map, so that's the plan here. So we're going to compress that into there, and then in Hyrule Magic, We'll open that up, go to our overworld, and I did change some palettes from earlier, so things are a little wonky around here. Um, but what we can do is we'll go to just any old block like this. Then we'll have to find a graphic we want to replace um, for right now. Um, it depends on how you want to make your hack, um, but you can, you know, just completely erase everything, start from scratch, or, you know, work with what the game has. So what I'll do here is now that these graphics are right here, 
I'll take this and we're going to draw them in there by selecting them and then pasting them down. They have block numbers as well as <clears throat> block types. So two means you can't walk or you can cannot walk through it yet. So we'll paste that down. And so now that is a block in the game right there. And say we want to change that thing's color, the palette of it. We'll go over here, right click it again, and we're going to adjust the palette here with so we have different options. Now these options are based on the palette which is displayed up here, number eight. And we can look at these these different options and change it accordingly. There's also the X flip, which will and the Y flip. So this is if you know I wanted to reuse these graphics, I could potentially just use this one side, but it wouldn't have that um, that shadow on it, as you can see here. There's a specific shadow on the other side that's affected. But, you know, to save graphics, you can just simply mirror things, as well as putting them in front. If you paste it down with the in front tag on it, that'll make it so it's in front of Link if you can walk through it. <coughs> and so that's basically how you <coughs> insert and construct things. Alright, so now I'm going to briefly touch on a 4-bit 16 color image. So, say you wanted to bring your own graphics into Link to the Past from an image editor. For here we'll be using Graphic Scale. This is how the intermediate Hyro Magic tutorial um, explains it. So what you'll do is you'll do File, New, and we're going to be doing Link's graphics here. So we'll set the, the size of it to 128 by 448, and it'll be set to 4-bit 16 colors. This is how long it is. So now, in your ROM, you can go to Link's Graphics right here. That's its own separate thing. And you can copy this whole image, and that will give you the entirety of Link's sprite. Paste it over here. Now you can go, as you can see, our palette is not the same. So you can go to Load Palette, Import from Clipboard, drag to select all here, and then do this. Match pixels with color. And so now this won't be a perfect palette representation, but what it does do is it gives you the opportunity to be able to edit Link's graphics. So, you know, we can just mess something up on him. Why not? Take these, paste them in, and it changes the graphics in Link to the Past. And now you can use this to edit any sorts of graphics in the game. However, um, when it comes to graphics besides Link's, uh, sprite, it's better to always use YYCHR, but you could, from your 4-bit 16 color image, import these into YYCHR as well. Another thing to mention, if you're editing Link's graphics here, um, you can customize his palette with his different level of swords, 1, 2, 3, and 4. You can customize the palette for his shield customize palette for his clothes so this is how you'll be able to like fix his hair from pink to yellow so I have it like yellow here so you can look in yours and you can change the colors for Ling's clothes and then when he gets later tunics alright so that's all for this video like I said if there's anything you don't understand just let me know in the comments uh, here I'm running around with these palettes applied now <laughs> and um, we'll be touching on the, the dungeon editor in the next part which will be another complicated subject and I'll probably end up doing videos where I kind of I speed up the footage, but I, I convert larger graphics into the game and change the palettes and whatnot so you can see a large project at work. It's just it would take a very long time to show a large project in a tutorial video where I'm commenting live. So don't forget to subscribe and like this shit. Thanks for watching.